Hi guys, this is Dale Calvert. Uh, on behalf of George and the Network Marketing Magazine, I'm excited to share this training with you on prospecting, uh, lead generation. Before we get into that, I think the most important thing that you need to understand, you know, it, it's not about just generating leads. Prospecting generating leads are crucial skill sets that must be developed if you're going to be successful in this industry long term. Uh, there's no question about that. But the thing I want to discuss briefly before we get into how to create leads and how to prospect is what is your recruiting process? What's your exposure process? And the reason I want to bring this up is because I did a survey with our uh, clients and customers over at MLMHelp.com here about two months ago. And I was absolutely astounded by the information that I got back. It, it, it was disheartening because the number of people that were out there just buying leads and then pounding the phones every night trying to convince somebody to join their program and were using no structured way to expose the people to their opportunity uh, through a webinar or a lead capture page, uh, some type of funnel system, it was absolutely overwhelming. I, it's like who taught them to build a business this way and the fastest way to burn out anybody is expect them to get on the phone and pound it out two or three hours every night to try to convince somebody to join their business. And I got one more story and then I'm gonna get into the training. This week I was at a grocery store here locally and I ran into a guy I hadn't seen in years his name's Mark, and we were in the Magic Club together when we were teenagers, uh, the International Brotherhood of Magicians. And I hadn't seen him, like I said, for years and years. And uh, I, we walked up and we were catching up, and it was great to see him. Mark's uh, still today a professional magician, uh, but he's always been an entrepreneur. He's always had other things going, side gigs all the time, and has been exposed to network marketing. He said, Dale, he said, he said are you still the network marketing guru? And I said, yeah, I said, I don't build it teams now, but I do training and consulting and seminars and uh, work with a few organizations that way. And I said, I, you know, it's an awesome industry. And he said, you know, I've joined two or three of those things and I could just never get anybody to join. And I didn't comment, but guys, that's what's going on in this industry. People get exposed, they get fired up, they get excited about the potential, and they go out into the marketplace like a chicken with their head cut off, and they're trying to explain something that they just got involved with, and they wonder why they cannot get anybody to join. And please understand what I'm trying to communicate here. I mean, it's so predictable. This has been happening for 30 years. And you know who I blame? Whoever sponsored that person and whoever sponsored their sponsor's sponsor. It's a leadership issue. When we bring people in the program and say, go sick them, and we expect somebody to create success from that type of training, only 3% of the population have the skill sets and the mindsets to go into the marketplace and create any kind of quote unquote success. And those that do will never be duplicatable. What they do cannot be done by most people. Now let's face it, 70% of the population, 70% of the people that join this industry are gonna fail. There's nothing you can do, there's nothing I can do, there's nothing George Madu can do, there's nothing your company can do. It's just the way people are. Uh, people, we live in a world where it's a lottery mentality. You know, we want to, and if that doesn't work, we buy another ticket. And we don't understand that in any industry there's skill sets and there's mindsets that are required in order to move forward and progress in that industry and especially in network marketing. So in network marketing, the first thing you've got to make sure you do is have your system in place. If you get a lead or when you get a lead, because getting leads is a simple part. It's easy. But what do you do with that lead? What are you going to do? Are you going to get on the phone and try to convince them to join your deal? 
then you just might as well quit now because you're not going to have any success there. And if you do, it will never duplicate on your team. There's only a small, minute people, number of people that have the ability to even think about doing that. And so we've always taught a two-step recruiting process. Step one is to create curiosity. Uh, when you follow up, you say, you know, they're going to be curious, and you, you, you remember the phrase, hold the questions, hold the questions. That's all going to be answered for you Thursday night on the webinar or wherever your play two is where somebody that knows what they're doing, that's been around for a while, can explain the entire story. You've got to let them hear the entire story. I can't tell you how many times I've gone out and done events and they say, you know, Dale, people here are different. Nobody wants to do anything. Nobody's interested in it. I said, what are they not interested in? Well, they're not interested in, in the product. They're not. And, and I said, how many people have you talked to? And, and they'll say, oh, phew, I've talked to 70 or 80 people here. Mm -hmm. How many of those 70 or 80 people got the opportunity to hear the whole story? And they look at me like this. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and we think that it's, there's something wrong with the people that live in our community. No, it's because you're lousy at what you're doing. You're terrible. Okay? And you're supposed to be terrible. We're all terrible when we start. I was the worst of the worst. We're all terrible. But it requires skill sets and mindsets. And you guys say, you know what? I can figure out how to do this correctly. I can learn from somebody that's done it. And not only have they done it, but they've taught other people to do it. And I, I can do this business. It's going to be challenging, guys. It's, it's a challenging, challenging business. I, I got to share you, with you one more story. And if this goes too long, just click out of the video. But... Uh, I had a, a young man I can remember years ago, and we were doing uh, opportunity overviews every Monday night at an office in Lexington, Kentucky, and we jammed it out, just packing it, people coming. Everybody knew that, that they, our people knew exactly how to create curiosity and then get fannies and chairs on Monday night. That was the business. If you don't have, fan we, we weren't into having people coming and hanging out and it being a social club. We were building a business. We weren't into, oh, you're oh, good to see you, like all you, you see going on today. It's about building a business. Look, if you just want to make extra money, go sell hammers at the flea market. Okay, network marketing is about building a business and creating lifetime wealth. That's what it's about. So, you have to have effective play one and effective play two where they can hear the whole story. Back then, it was Monday night, Lexington, Kentucky at our office. And we always had a ton of guests. And I can remember one night I'm sitting there and this, I see this new couple walking through and a brand new person who had been there, who had just joined a couple weeks before that, had this couple with them. And I'm kind of watching them out of the side of my, my eyes. and. The, the, the lady seemed excited. The husband knew. I knew he was dragged there. And the whole thing started. And I'm, I like to pay attention to new people and their body language. And he was just sitting here like he was ready to fall asleep. And they went through the company. And, you know, he was like this. And they went through the product. He was kind of a little bit like this. And, by, and then I did the comp plan. And by the time I was done, he was just like a rocket. I mean, this, this kid was fired up and excited. He was almost foaming at the mouth. And I knew he saw something. Well, when it was over, you know, I went around to different guests and asked the question you should always ask, even if it's on a conference call, even if, if it's the end of the webinar, the question you always ask is, and you should know this, maybe you probably shouldn't know it, but you should know it. And the question you always ask, is there any questions we need to answer for you before we get you started tonight? And I was listening to my people and they were all asking that. And if they ran into a question they couldn't under, they didn't know the answer to, then they would flag me and I would come and answer the question and I would answer it. And I would, first of all, I would say, if you weren't concerned about that, then would you be ready to get started tonight? And they said, well, what a, and, and then I would say, if you weren't concerned about that, would you be ready to get started tonight? 
And then by the third time, they would say, well, you know, the thing I'm really concerned about, and they would tell me, and then I could answer the objection or, or give them the information they needed to help them make the best decision for them. Okay, so what we end up doing a lot, we answer a bunch of excuses that aren't really the issue, and until we find out what the issue is, uh, we can never help people overcome that issue. So that's a good little training there, guys. I mean, what questions do I need to answer for you tonight before we get you started? And they give you a question. If you weren't concerned about that, would you be ready to get started tonight? Well, what about, if you weren't concerned about that, would you be ready to get started? Well, my real issue is, and that's what you want to get down to. So answer the first two little lobs, objections they throw at you and then answer the real issue and say, hey, you ready to get started? And they say, well, I just don't think this is for me, Dale. Hey, no problem. If you're going to do this business, I know you've been already thinking about a couple people. Who'd be the first person you talk to? And I got my pen out ready to write. Who would be the first person you talk to? And again, guys, this is a whole nother training we don't have time for. I'm supposed to be talking about how to generate leads. First way to generate leads, find an effective way to let people, for them to let people, they know that they're in business. That's number one. Back in the old days, we called it memory jogger. But here's the thing, guys. If you, I can walk into any room in the United States where there's thousands of distributors, and I ask one question. How many of you got started in the industry from a friend, family member, coworker? That's how you got your start. It's 90% of the room. I've done it dozens and dozens and dozens at 90% of the room. But what do we do as network marketers? And what have we been doing in the last 15 years? All we've been doing is recruiting each other. That's it. And again, it's a whole nother topic. So we have, number one is how can they let people that they know, that they have some credibility with, they go to church with, they're in the Qantas club together, they, they whatever, friends, family, how can they let people know that they're in business? Not try to talk them into the program, not trying to get them to do it, but how can they let people they know they are in the business? Okay, so you gotta answer that question. And I could give you, I could spend 30 minutes on this, on what we do, and what we teach our clients to do. But that's number one. See, the first thing people, people have to do. If I was going out here and starting a restaurant and I'm going to start Dale's Tacos up here on Main Street in my small little community, the first thing I would do, and, and, and again, we, we network markers forget how tr traditional business and leadership works. The first thing I would do is I would send a letter with coupons and a brochure or a menu to everybody I knew in the community saying, hey, our grand opening is Saturday. Hope you can come and see us. The, is that intimidating? Does that give people like, get away from me. I don't want to hear about it. No. It's, it's just natural business. So one of the, and I'll tell you this real quick. One of the things that we do is we teach people there's a specific letter that they can send in the mail. Think about that. In the mail. Nobody gets mail anymore. It's all email and text. We do teach text. We teach what you go through every name on your text, and this is exactly what you send to them. We do teach an email, but we also teach a letter. And the letter says, hey, we've just started a new business. We're really excited about it. In close, you will find information about our product. Can you do us a favor? Pass this brochure along to anybody that you know that may be health conscious or may be interested in losing weight, et cetera, et cetera. So that's number one. That's how we start the business. That's how we get the business off the ground. It's like an airplane. The hardest, the, 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 the hardest part about an airplane is getting the lift off, to get it off the ground. Once you get it off the ground and you get it up, then it's just basic systems to generate leads that can keep it on autopilot. Most network marketers never get their business off the ground. You know why? Because they go out and they try to talk three or four people into the program. All three of those four people are doing, giving them this, 
and they're done. Most network marketers quit in the first 72 hours. Maybe they get on the conference call and hang out, but they're done. They're baked. Emotionally, mentally, psychology with the, psychologically, within 72 hours after they join, they're out of the deal. Because we let them go out like a chicken with their head cut off. Oh, I didn't complete my story about the, the couple. So this couple comes into the meeting. He's fired up when it's over. I'm going around talking to people. And then I don't know where they are. I don't see them anymore. So I'm, I don't know what's happened. I'll talk to their sponsor or the person that brought them later on. And I had some things. I was in the office for a while. And then everybody left. And I'm coming downstairs, come down the elevator, uh, come out to my car. And I'm walking out to my car. And this kid is just coming at me like this in the parking lot. And, and I don't know if he's mad or if he's excited or what's going on. And he, he starts out, my name, blah, blah, my name, blah, blah, my, my name, so and so, I'm from so and so, and blah, blah, blah. And I drove an hour and a half to be here tonight. And I am so fired up for the first time in my life. I see it, I understand it, residual income, I'm working as this. And he went on and on and on and on. And, and he's just so fired up. And he said, he said I need to go sh tell my friends tomorrow at work exactly about what I saw tonight. What do I need to say to them? And I said, Shut up. Because he tells his story a couple years later from stage. He says, the first words Dale Calvert ever said to me was, shut up. And I said, look, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to be harsh. But I understand where you are. And if you'll just stop, take a breath, and let me show you what you need to do, I promise you with your enthusiasm, you're going to do well here. But you cannot go out and run your mouth and blow it with everybody that you know, like most people do. I said, just take a breath. And I gave him a couple of audios. Or, and I said, I want you to listen to these. Here's my phone number. And that's when I start throwing ball. I start throwing the ball to him. And when you're done with that, you call me back. And he did. He called me the next night. And then I gave him the next step. And I threw him the ball. And he finished that, and he threw it back. And that was our relationship for 18 months. 18 months. I directed him in the beginning. I coached him after he knew what to do and what to say. Then after he knew it, and he had done it, and I listened to him do it, then I supported him, gave him the encouragement that he need. See, what most people do, they get somebody involved and they move right into an encouragement, a support stage with people. They say, hey, if you need any help, you just let me know. I'll be happy to do three ways with you. And the, and the, the new distributor doesn't even know what a three way is. That's not leadership, guys. That's support, okay? If you want to be a supporter, network marketing is not for you. It's about leadership and developing leaders. So I took him through and then got him to a point of delegation. What does that mean? That means that when he started new people, he could do the exact steps that I did with them. And I taught him, if they quit throwing the ball back, have definite closure and go find somebody else to play with. 18 months later, the kid's making over $200,000 a year. See, so, Oh, I don't even. I, I'm going everywhere. I hope I'm. I hope you guys are taking notes because I've lost myself. Number one, get people started right. That's what I did with this kid. He got it started right in his local market, and he attracted a lot of people. He really did. He attracted a lot of people, and they drove an hour and a half to come and hear the whole story. And if he knew that under no circumstances do you ever try to explain what you're doing. You, and, and back then, which would be the same today, it's just what is your play one? Back then, our play one was a, a VHS tape. And I said, you show this, and, and they're going to ask questions, and you're going to say, hold the questions, we'll answer that Monday night. Hold the questions, we're going to answer that Monday night. Hold the questions, we're going to answer that Monday night. And every Monday night, he would have three or four people that he would bring with him, drive an hour and a half one way to get their questions answered. It's not, it's human nature, guys. It's not difficult when we 
use fundamental foundational principles. So number one, get people started right. Number two, and make sure that they contact everybody they know to let them know they're in business. And it doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable. It's sending a letter. Here's the brochure. And we've got a, we have a follow-up script for that as well. That's, but that's number one. Number two is drop cards. Okay, I, I tell people, the, I want you to get some drop cards. Now, these are fancy ones. It's like a $100 bill. I mean, you lay that on the floor somewhere. I don't care where it is. You lay it on a counter when you go pick up your Subway sandwich. You put this on the gas pump when you're filling up gas. Somebody's going to pick it up, and they are going to open it. Period. End of story. It's impossible, human nature, for them not to. Then they'll read the little, whatever you have, the little ad here. Now, some people will throw it in the trash. Most people. Some people will immediately respond because their window is open. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're looking for something. They'd love to find some, another way to create cash flow. Some people are worried about getting laid off and like this might be the answer for them. A lot of people will put it in their, take it home, put it in their top drawer, and some will respond a year or two later. Now, this is a $100 bill drop card. They're at cmgpromotions.com. cmgpromotions.com. But you can use this with a, with a Vistaprint card. It can be just a business card that you get, you know, $14.99. These things are expensive, but they look good and they work. But so does a little Vistaprint card. It doesn't matter. But see, so what I want to get people started right, boom, let's get it off the ground in their local with people that they know, either through direct mail, text. And, and again, we're not putting any pressure on anybody. We don't want most of them. Honestly, we don't want any of them. Honestly, what I'm looking for, see, every dud knows a stud. Every person that they know knows somebody that's entrepreneur-minded, that, 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 that's a go-getter. See, that's why my buddy at Kroger gets one call a week, he said, from some network marketing program, because they know he's entrepreneur-minded. He's a go-getter. So when I show the opportunity, really, and I'm saying, what questions do we have to answer for you before we get you started? And they say, well, Dale, you love that. I'm just hoping they tell me, no, nah, I don't think this is for me. Okay, no, pro here, no problem. No problem. But let me ask you a question. If you were going to do this, who would be the first person you talk to? That's who you really want. That's who you really want. I can take 50 duds and find the entrepreneurs they know that way. Work smart, guys. Quit working so hard and pounding your head against the wall. Work smart. So, start it right. Drop cards is number one. Number two is bulletin board flyers. You know, I love people. Now, those flyers don't work. Bulletin board flyers. You've seen them go in Starbucks, go in Panera Bread on the back wall. They have a place where you can, you know, lost cat, lost dog. They're all over your community. And I'm not going to have time to explain everything about a, a flyer today, but I do want you to know that when you put it up, you also, all at the bottom, you want to make sure you have the tear-off tabs that sends people to a, a voicemail system or your website. And when you put that up, always tear one of them off because nobody wants to be first. Also, another tip there is make sure there's a box in the center that has your contact information. So if all the tabs are gone, they still can contact you. That's number two. That's another way to create a lead. Number, number three, a lot of companies now have magazines that feature that company. Not very many, but some do. If your company does have that, make sure you have 15 of those in your local community with your name and your phone number, a sticker or a stamp it on the back of that magazine for more information, contact, and you have your information. And then you want to put these in waiting areas, dentist office, doctor's office, where people change tires and they're sitting down because when we sit down in a dentist office, a doctor's office, tire, cha tire change facility, oil change facility, we sit down and what's the first thing we do? We're looking for something to read. 
So if they pick that up and they start reading it, and then on the back, they can say, hey, this is a local number. That's a good, good way for your new people to start generating leads. Okay, you know, a lot of people want to teach these advanced algebra. Do stuff in the beginning that the average person can do. Is this making sense? Can they go on Vistaprint or CMG Promotions and order drop cards? Absolutely. Can, can you give them a flyer where they can put different bulletin board flyers in their community? Absolutely. Can they take a magazine and put it out where somebody can pick it up, read it, create some interest about the product and the company, and give them a call? Yes, that's the first three things. I've got a dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens more of these, but I'm not sure how long I was supposed to go on this video, and I've already feel like I went longer than I should, so I'm just going to end it for this month. I don't know what, George, what the topic's going to be next month, but I'll come back and share some information with you that I hope you'll find compelling. Uh, if you haven't visited me, please come and see me over at MLMHelp.com. Uh, I would appreciate it, guys. You have an awesome month. We'll talk to you next month.